Are you committed to running again for speaker, or do you truly see your role as just getting the Republican conference through the November election? Um, no, I, I intend to lead this conference uh, in the future. And uh, the, the, the most important <coughs> thing that we have to do right now is govern the country well, um, show the American people that we will and that we are, that's what we've been doing, and then I'm convinced that, that my number one job and responsibility is to keep and grow the House majority uh, in November. That's my singular focus right now. We have plans for the next Congress, and, and we've, we've been outlining a lot of that. Uh, but right now, it's all hands on deck, uh, all hands on the wheel, and, and uh, steering, the, steering the ship upstate, so to speak. So I'm, I'm honored to be able to do that. I expect I'll be doing that in the future. I'm glad to have the support of President Trump. I was down with him most recently this, this weekend. And uh, all of our, the leaders of our party, we're united in this, in this cause because our objective and our mission is to save the country. And if, in my view, if we don't grow the House majority and we don't retake the Senate for the Republican Party and the White House, um, then I, it's, it's, I think we're facing a very serious threat to our republic. Last question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Some of your GOP colleagues have asked, why are you even negotiating with MTG? She's trying to remove you. Uh, you know, why are you why are you in entertaining her demands? I think John Banner were still here. He might have called her a legislative terrorist. So, I, can you talk a little bit about why you decided to sit down? Well, with let her me let me let me end? let me address it. So, uh, yesterday I met at some length with uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Thomas Massey. Um, uh, it was a good discussion. I thought it was productive. We're, we'll we'll visit again today. It's not a negotiation. Okay. This is how I've operated as Speaker. I committed to do it before I became Speaker, and we've been doing this for the last six, last six months. I addressed, uh, reminded this, uh, my conference of this just within the last hour. Um, everybody knows. I have lengthy discussions, detailed discussions, on a daily basis with members across the conference. There are 217 of us. Um, it takes a lot of time. This is why I, I don't get enough sleep these days. But we, what it's required when you have the smallest majority in history is that you have to quite literally get everyone to work together. When you can only lose one vote on a, on a, on a party preference or priority, it, it takes a lot of time to build consensus. And so what I do every day, Scott, is um, almost on an hourly basis, is I hear suggestions and ideas and thoughts from, from members. At, my door has been open from day one. Everybody knows that. I mean, I spend endless hours at this. Um, there's nothing unusual of, about this. Um, I've, I've heard Marjorie and Thomas's ideas, just like I have every day for the last six months hurt others. And I reminded the conference this morning, everybody uh, has the same opportunity to do that. It's not a negotiation at all. What we're trying to do and what my job is, is to every day improve processes, procedures, our, our, uh, our, our policy preferences, our legislation, and make sure that uh, we can build the right consensus to get everybody together. It takes an inordinate amount of time and a lot of patience to do that in a time like this. Um, but I'm committed to it. And um, you know, we, we're going to continue to do that. So I, I take uh, Marjorie's ideas and Thomas's and everybody else's equally, and we assess them on their own value and, uh, and, and where we can make improvements and changes and all of that we do. And that's, that's what this is. There's nothing more than that going on. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, one more.